punishment of kufr, I guess, disbelieving in God and shirk. So this is um, asking about two different individuals. Um, a person who has doubts about the truth of God, for example, a scientist who can neither confirm or deny God's existence and dies in, in that state of not knowing the truth. Mm. Or a person who rationalizes the non-existence of God or existence of several gods based on the evidence presented to him in this life. For example, polytheists, atheists, or believers in Trinity. So uh, this person is asking, what is the punishment for these individuals, if, if there is some sort of punishment? You, um, obviously, the question is about the life hereafter, mm -hmm. because uh, it's never a question that anyone in this life could be punished yes, for, yes. for uh, being an unbeliever. What is God's punishment for these uh, Well, it, the, uh, the, the, the standard way in which Muslims have thought about things is that uh, you know, there are two places, heaven and hell, uh, and there are two kinds of people, Muslims and non-Muslims. Uh, so uh, the formula is very simple. Uh, Muslim, heaven, uh, non-Muslim, hell. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, it, the, the matter is more complex than this, because when we think about God and his creation, he doesn't do anything without a purpose. Uh, he ev all of his acts are governed by wisdom. Uh, and uh, his mercy precedes his wrath. When we put all of these principles together, uh, we, we see that the, the common way of thinking of things, or that simplistic way which I first described, that cannot be the whole truth of the matter. Mm. Because it would mean then that uh, Muslims, being a, a minority in the world, just, just a one quarter of the world's population, or on the best estimate a little bit better than this, uh, then it will mean that if you just consign all of the non-Muslims to hell, then the majority of people, the vast majority, are going simply to going to hell. And, and that calls into question uh, the wisdom of God's creation. Did he create a, a system that is so wasteful? Hmm. Uh, but uh, now, it, uh, that prompts us to think more carefully about the issues. And we realize, as we think more carefully, that everyone has a purpose in, in God's creation. Uh, even Satan has a purpose. Uh, and without going into that in more detail, we can say that human beings, both Muslims and non-Muslims, have uh, their purposes and they're serving some purpose. Uh, some are serving good purposes despite themselves. Even the atheist serves a good purpose in that uh, atheists, by questioning the um, the, the simplicity of, of the faith of believers uh, are forcing believers to think more deeply and carefully about their faiths. Now, you cannot, uh, in, the, in the face of the atheist objection, you can no longer just simply say, I affirm that and I believe that and that's the end of the matter. Mm -hmm. You have to think more rationally about what you believe. And, and your thinking more rationally about what you believe may in fact intens intensify your belief because if you're thinking emotionally about what you believe, then you are in a way protective of that belief and you're afraid lest someone should find some fault in it. But uh, if you allowed the atheist to ask his question and then, uh, you thought more carefully about what you believe and you have an answer for the atheist, now you are satisfied, you feel more tranquil, you don't mind if somebody were to open up your faith and examine it. So the faith of the believer becomes more intensified even in the presence of the atheist question if the believer approaches this uh, correctly. Mm -hmm. So I in short, the people who are uh, thinking uh, uh, critically about belief and sometimes even rejecting belief after thinking about it critically, they also fulfill a purpose in God's creation. Now, would God create people and they're fulfilling some good purposes and then in the end just simply punish them? Uh, what would be the purpose of that? Mm -hmm. Now, if someone uh, were, was clearly presented with the message of God and, and God made every appeal to this person, it's clear to this person, look, I am your creator, I'm asking you to just simply fulfill the purpose for which I created you. And, and this person is denying and refusing to fulfill the purpose for which God created him or her. Well then, um, it, it wouldn't be uh, unnatural or uh, contrary to wisdom if God were to then dispose of that person uh, as, as we dispose of things that, that we make for a certain purpose but, but is failing to fulfill its purpose. Uh, so in, in that sense we can understand that some people in the life hereafter would be, be thrown away, discarded into the great uh, recycling bin of, of uh, the cosmos. Uh, which we are referring to now as with the term hell. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as, as some of our uh, recycling uh, bins here uh, might be full of flames to deal with the refuse, uh, that, that's how hell is traditionally also conceived. All right, we'll leave it at that. That's all the time we have. Thank you, Billy Spear. You're welcome.